59 gamers, we are back with another installment of your favorite Dokkan Battle podcast called the Dokkan Battle Podcast. I'm your host, Toon Rami, and joining me this week is the international family guy himself, Talon. Why was I must mean that's on? Part time stand user and full time Super Battle Road King, the Mass Ningen. Yo, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> I like that. Yo, stellt euch dem schnellsten und mächtigen Speedrunner Sunblade. Hello, guys. The homie who needs no introduction, Goresh. Why is it so dry? So dry in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this is going to be a fun show. Make sure you guys are locked in across all of our social media platforms and fully connect with the 59G network. Follow us on Twitch, Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube, join the Discord, check out the Facebook fan page, brand new Reddit, brand new website, everything, you name it, it's there. Lock in today. With all that said... Let's jump into the most eventful episode of the Dokkan Battle Podcast of all time, episode 12, Happy Holodry. So Thanks we'll for start the intro, with... Tune. Just an FYI. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> so thanks for the intro, by the way, Tune. Forgot one, but you know. <laughs> you said you were going to be mute the whole time. No! Hydros is here, folks. <laughs> Hi, Hydros. You literally I didn't say said I was going to be mute. mute the whole no, time. I did not. You yes, you that. did. No, Hydros is here, folks. We love Hydros. What's up, Hydros? You just messed up. This show's messed up. All right. <laughs> Episode 12, yeah, Holodry. Drive. Leave me alone. <laughs> all right. Starting with topic number one. The three easy A's that happened on JP. JP's getting all the good stuff right now. We got Gogeta. We got Goku Blue. We got Goku Blue. So let's just throw it out there, folks. Which of the three easy A's do you want to first start talking about? Which one's the most OP? Is this the best easy A batch of all time for JP? What's going on with it? Well, we should get the bad one out of the way first and just start with Tech Goku. All I right, think. Tech Goku Blue, then. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. He's yeah. the next new lead easy game, so take yeah. it away, folks. I mean, that's literally his only value that I see here is the fact that he is a like pretty much the best nuking lead in the game, right? And yeah, Tech is. is the most important typing for it, too, because if you go into the punching machine, the best strategy, I believe, still to this day, is Goku and Frieza on the Tech uh, with the Tech team, right? So yeah. this guy, I think he goes from 35 or 33 to 35% in the leader skill. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you get an extra 2% per orb. That's actually pretty significant, depending on how many orbs you're getting. And that's pretty much all this guy's worth for at all. Like, yeah, <laughs> the, the fact that they gave him that uh, restriction of only having to have tech types on the turn. Like, okay, first of all, it's a much tougher restriction than the AGL one. And you're getting mm -hmm. a worse bonus for fulfilling that. It yep. just doesn't make it. It's like backwards. Which is, this this guy should be getting a bigger boost if he's gonna have a tougher restriction. So I, I don't really know what they were thinking. It's just not logical. <laughs> they probably yeah, gave over like, the team B. They're just like, oh, okay. Well, here we need this third guy made. Can you guys quickly make this for us, real quick? Yeah, it's like the nuke lead thing is basically the only thing you'd use him for now, and realistically, that's only for people who still need to finish all the punch bag missions which yeah you say that I mean, like you finished it have you finished yeah it? i was gonna say i still do um even with apparently you can do it with um easy a super saiyan 3 broly now but i haven't been able to get lucky enough like with the rotation to actually get it um i actually counted all the remaining missions that i have to complete the other day and if i can actually do it and get the top score i can get another like i think it's like 33 or 35 stones or something so I do want to do it, but I, uh, I'm i just not getting the luck. Like, the fact that you can only do it twice a day, and then it'll be like, I'll forget to do it for a little while. And then it'll be like, oh, I'll jump in and see if I can try the nuking event. So it's like, attempt one, my nuker's in slot seven. It's like, okay, quit out. Attempt two, the nuker's on turn one with no supports or orb changes. It's like, oh, cool. I guess I'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> I've... I've literally stopped trying. Before, I used to yeah. religiously try every single day, double attempts on all three, right? I have I have never done it for like maybe four or five months now. And it's also gotten to the point where I'm completely numb to the fact that not all my missions are complete in the game just because I can't get those done. I've like fully accepted that it'll never happen. This is sadly giving me hope, but I feel like it is actually possible because like Goresh said, the only real function for this guy is to run them on the Goku Frieza nuking team, right? And I've yeah. got the exact team needed to get it done. All I need is more power. So once I do that, I will never use this unit ever again. <laughs> I've only done. I've only ever attempted the punching machine event twice. The first one was for the stone when they first came out, and then the second time was for Paranga. Wow, Paranga. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember okay. that one. Mm -hmm. 
Sunblade, how uh, how well versed are you in the art of the punching bag event? Well, first off, daily reminder that this is basically the worst event in the game. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. This event is absolutely horrible. And this is worse than chain battle in world tournament. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. actually, kind of. As I agree. With, I Wait, agree, worse yeah. than world tournament? I, I mean, uh, let's not. <laughs> I mean, I, I I get I get we're salty, but. I mean, hey, at least this is over in like five minutes. I'm like, exactly, yeah. World tournament's just like you want to <laughs> actually off yourself <laughs> in a video game. In a so, video um, game. Yeah, I, I still have to finish the missions, but I absolutely do not care about that. So um, I move you here, Toon. Yep. Out of the, uh, th this is the second, of course, the second nuking lead easier that we've had. The first one set a pretty decent precedent in the form of the AGL Golden Frieza. He is a massive tank with 90% damage reduction and then an infinite attack stacking. So after that, do you do you find this unit, given his very unique skill set in the passive uh, section, do you think that this was a complete letdown, a complete misstep? Or do you think that this is uh, the, the stepping stone for something potentially even greater on the next mm. nuking EZA, like in the form of the physical mm. blue Vegeta or whatnot? Well, they've expanded the... Uh... <laughs> the barriers of what we can expect quite significantly because like you said like the leader skill the nuking lead thing is no one really does that anymore outside of that event so at right. least the agl golden freezer is actually good in other events and stuff i mean this guy because of how limiting his passive is the only other thing you'd probably use him on would be super tech extreme super battle road and i don't know if he's good enough to be on that team so they've definitely, there's a huge like variation between how good those two units are. It's basically the equivalent of like AGL Golden Freezer is Super 17 and this guy is Super Saiyan 3 Broly. So the other yeah. nuke lead could literally just be anywhere in between. So I, I do want to say that I'm a huge fan of that like part of his passive because this is a, this, whenever they do something for the first time, an experiment, I really like that a lot. Mm. Um, so the fact that he needs like oh the whole rotation has to be a certain category or a certain typing I think that's a good uh, concept the only problem is they just completely null like nulled that part of his passive obsolete when they released the same named unit with the better version yeah the same yeah. type of passive <laughs> yeah. so it's like what the hell were they thinking yeah and speaking of that is not the only unit that received that sort of a stipulation in the Passive. So let's move on to the other Goku Blue that got the EZA treatment, the AGL one. The AGL Goku Blue, oh, I yes. would think a lot of us are in agreement, is one of the best EZAs, if not the best ever, right? He's definitely up there. Um, I mean, yeah, you do have to have him on a Realm of Gods team, but it's not really hard. And you can still run him on movie heroes to get his full passive uh just because you have you know gogeta blue you have the actual heroes lead himself super gogeta who goes into gogeta blue um this dude hits like a tank like it's it's pretty crazy how powerful this guy is um and i actually really like it the only thing i would have changed about him personally is i wish it had been realm of gods or movie heroes to be on rotation with you but it's a small nitpick otherwise i think he's He's very impressive. Oh, and uh, can we please use a sticker for him, Akatsuki? For some reason, we can't, but... Wait, know. really? Yeah, we can't. It sucks. I I, huh. I, I, I used the sticker from... What are you talking yeah, he's about? Yeah, he's an EZA. Dude, I just, tried, I just tried to use the sticker from the other day, and it didn't work. He's definitely got one. I'm going to try it right well. now. Okay. Do it right now, Talon. Let us know the results. All right, we're yeah, going I'm, to I'm going to try right now. I've got like 20 stickers. Well, we won't be able to, Toon, because he doesn't have an EZA yet. You have to have an EZA in order to be able to use a sticker? Stickers are oh. for EZAs or Dokon Fest exclusives only. Uh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, that's yeah. why I've been saving one for in the hopes that my boy Marseille would get an EZA. So as soon as he got his announced, I mean, oh, I say I'm saving one. I've barely used any of mine, to be fair. I mean, I don't I, even I've, use I've literally anymore, tweeted so. that before. Like, I literally said that stickers were reserved for EZAs and Dokon Fest. So oh, you there expect you go. me to just be reading every one of your tweets? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Huzzah, the there we works. go. All right. We're hey. all good to go on the sticker thing right there. However, <laughs> get rid of that stupid diamond background, Akatsuki. Mm. <laughs> Let me use unit Okan. <laughs> I will so, uh, say for, for, for this unit, like, yeah. I, I think the biggest thing that he's really good at is being a floater. 
because the biggest thing that you want to make sure you're doing with him is you want to make sure you're supering before he gets hit. Um, so yeah, he could be good in slot two, but him as a role, as a support unit on the Realm of Gods team, like there's so many powerful rotations on this team that are possible. You have like yeah. Gato Jiren, you have like both of the blue fusions, you have like LR Rosés on there, like just like a bajillion Realm of Gods units, right? That are ridiculous, yeah. like LRUI Goku, Blue Kaioken Goku, the Blue Goku and Vegeta. Again, there's like 50 trillion different rotations. So I don't know if you want to prioritize this EZA specifically as a main rotation unit, but if you put him as a floater, he's gonna have like 250k defense, maybe a little bit less than that. But he's giving the whole rotation 20% attack, 7% crit, and he's hitting for like 4 million. Yeah. So as a floater, he seems pretty good to me. <laughs> That's actually oh, what I was going to mention, because nowadays I've been finding myself enjoying certain units that I have to rotate off for various events. Like, for example, the five-year fusions, sure, they, they can run as the, the main attack units. But if you need to, they have great utility on the third spot. And I feel like that's that's a niche uh, function that not many units have. So having yeah. someone like this that can kind of do that is an underrated a greatly appreciated asset for a team. Yeah, and I actually feel like it's a similar concept, which might seem a little bit crazy, for the LR first form EZA Frieza. Because okay. even though he's not a support unit, he gets like some monstrous level of defense when he supers, right? In the first or third slot. So you can put him in the first slot, but if he's getting super before he attacks, he's going to take a ton of damage. And that's how I feel about this Goku too, where... You can put him in the first line, it's going to be good, but you have to make sure that you're not being attacked like 50 times in that first slot. Otherwise, you're going to, you know, it's not going to be pretty. So right. that's why I feel like these units that are just getting massive amounts of defense on their super attacks, it's just you're more often than not going to be safer floating them off. And as a floater, there aren't many units in the game other than some dedicated support units that are good as a floater. Like, yeah, you can put like Vegito Blue, like we see in the video right now, the physical Vegito Blue is a floater. He's going to be good, obviously, but. I feel like that in that third slot, you generally want to have units that are able to just like eat all the damage. Because again, if you put a support unit in that third slot, the biggest weakness that most support units have these days is that they can't defend well. So yep. units like this Blue Goku and that first form SDR EZA Frieza, like they can pretty much eat a super attack in Super Battle Road and not have to worry about anything. So ever since that AGL Golden Frieza got his EZA, I've actually been starting to stockpile some of these other nuking units with their SA5 dupes. Have you guys been doing the same thing? Uh, I haven't Not for the yet, but I units. haven't pulled extra copies of them, really, to be fair. so I really hope the next one is Physical Vegito, Vegito Blue, because I've got an SA10 ready to go. That's right, SA10. All right, now let's move on to the last of the three EZAs. Possibly the best EZA of all right now i don't know the int gogeta so that is the newest 120 lead to be getting the eza treatment uh talon we'll start with you thoughts on this unit does he take the title of best eza to date all right put your shotguns down i have to say no <laughs> i what? don't think I, I okay 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 what? okay i know what <laughs> okay so he's a, a great EZA. There's absolutely no denying that he was going to be amazing when he got his EZA. And clearly he has. It, it, it's no competition that he has obviously gotten better. It's just using him. Like I've used him in hard events. I've used him in long events. And while it's great to see him hitting a 3 million attack stat and everything, or if you get the rainbow orbs, you know, he gets the 3.8, I believe, or so. Um... I, I don't know. I, I If someone calls him the best, I look at him and I go, I don't really think he is. He, he really just isn't. Um, in terms of best EZA, I still have to give it to... I, I think it's a mix between Super or Physical Vegito Blue or Super 17, to be honest. I, I, especially if we're just yes. talking about the 120. If we're talking about the 120 uh, EZAs right now, Super 17 still holds the crown. Yes. Like, I, I don't um, think there's, I don't think there's any denying that right this now. This might be a hot take, but I would hands down say that that blue Goku we just talked about is better than Gogeta. Yeah, no, I would say that. Yeah. No, I, I usually would. I'll, I'll just take. talk about the one twenty. I'll just talk about the one twenties uh, in terms of th those okay, ECAs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I would say Super Seventeen still still hits a cake, and mm, 
I don't know. I was, I was originally I was gonna say maybe Kid Boo because there's all his links and everything, but I maybe put Gogeta. But I don't know. It's uh, I, don't I think more the time. one thing about Super Seventeen specifically that people don't really remember or give credit to him about is the seventeen percent crit. He oh my god! Oh so, <laughs> yes, it's exactly. so it's so ridiculous. Yeah. Now the Plus, one downside to the seventeen though is that of course his teams are very limiting, unfortunately. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I mean but, that's why they yeah. made him so good, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he got the he really got that extra shine by the and no uh, big bad bosses production of power absorption. But yeah, I think I think that might be why they made his EZA so good to make up for the fact that he doesn't have big bad bosses. Because the thing that people forget about him is obviously he has to build up. So depending how many times you get attacked, it might take a couple of turns. But he can hit four or five million attack stats. But then he's also taking no damage from basically anything. So yep. Yeah, he's. Uh, He's the king. I'm so glad I backed that horse for so long because now he's actually good. <laughs> yeah, well, they're gonna although, eventually make although, another one too, right? Yeah. Hopefully. Although let's just let's just say let's just say this though. Once physical cooler comes out, let's be honest. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of hoping happen. that he's uh, he takes the cake because okay, well, he's, this he's, is actually gonna... this is actually another important topic to talk about quickly too. Is in terms of valuing EZA units, you can talk about how good this Gogeta is all you want, but the fact that the another super gogeta exists that is good i would say this guy's better than the str one mm -hmm. but there is another you know easy a super gogeta that exists who is not so much worse than this one obviously he's worse but he's not like dead weight right mm. so the the marginal increase in power level you're getting from using this guy over the str one is not even close to like super 17 because he's the only super 17 in the game same thing with the physical cooler there's no other good final form cooler in the game that can compete with that one so yeah. that's why those units are so valuable. You can see, you can say the same thing about Super Saiyan 3 Broly. Even though people hate on Super Saiyan 3 Broly, guess what? There's no other Super Saiyan 3 Broly that's usable. So that's what makes him a good EZA, even though people hate on him. Like, you can still use the SDR Gogeta, right? Like, he, he's good yeah. enough to use. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you don't need the int one. Obviously, the int one is better, but the marginal increase you're getting over the in, for the int one over the SDR one is way less than a unit that's just the only unit in the game of their name that you can use. Yeah. Yeah. For, for sure. these subsequent 120 EZAs that are on the way, we obviously would expect bigger and better EZAs, better upgrades, more powerful builds and skill sets and all that. Would you guys be okay with these units getting the similar type of upgrades that we've seen, the conventional boost, the very easy to predict ones? Or are you okay with them taking these opportunities to actually experiment with newer mechanics, kind of like what they did? with the tech Goku Blue. Whether or not it's a guaranteed success or sometimes they crash and burn, would you guys be up, oh, open to seeing potentially different types of upgrades that are very oh obscure God. and yes. uh, abstract? Yeah. yeah? I mean, That's I'd literally okay all I want to see. I want to see them experiment. Even like, on the marquee 120s? Yes. Yeah, well, yeah cuz think that. about like even like Goresh what well, everything Goresh just said about the naming thing is very much true, but like even certain units like you think about like Tech Angel Goku He's kind of he's he's the only Super Saiyan three Tech Angel Goku, right? Other than the free to play yep. one, yeah. Um, yeah he but he sucks yeah. now. Like you just don't use him at all. So he's a perfect opportunity to like for them to take a risk and give him something interesting. Right. Because unless they make him terrible, just by the fact that he's getting an easy A, that's going to bring him back into being a unit that you're hopefully going to want to use. So then that gives them the perfect opportunity to give him some sort of interesting kit because if they just slap like another big attack and defense and then he does something when you pick up like a rainbow orb or something then yeah he's still going to be good and is going to be back to being relevant but no one's going to be like super excited to use him again so i I, I fully expect to see like like something like the physical cooler like i expect it to be something like if you have uh conquest of terrors category you know ally on your rotation or if you have something like that probably in his passive somewhere but you have to remember that physical cool is already a beast pretty easy a eh? so if they're just gonna obviously you know increase his stats you know the passive increases to what is it 120 now so make it 130 even just 140 if you want to and then i don't know guaranteed crit when running with a extreme or with a um conquest of terror category uh, guess what str cooler is already gonna be right there because they're basically best <laughs> partners yeah yep, yep. <laughs> so there's um I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it I I would not I don't want it to be as that like I don't I don't okay I I don't mind and I don't mind that but I would say though don't make it like the tech Goku where it 
infinitely makes it as like, oh, well, I'm never going to see that part, right? Ma make it restrictive where I'm going to want to run him with other particular units and everything, but don't make it where it's like, why would I ever bring that particular card, though? That That's my only thing, I would say. Mm. Well, the cooler has the potential to be one of the best ones solely because of all the like the teams that he's on. Oh, yeah. He's on so he's many like... teams that people actually yeah. use. Um, yep. Yes. And I guess mm -hmm. Janemba is probably the next one up, at least for the extreme, in terms of like usability on different teams. Obviously, he's on slightly less, but I mean, transformation boost is a big. Uh, I'm a, a big little deal, worried so. about STR Janemba. I'm not gonna lie, because Int to this day is still really, yeah, really I good. Mean, but that's a prime example of what I was just talking about too, where it's right. like, yeah, the STR one is probably gonna be better than the Int one, but is it gonna be a big enough difference to really matter mm. that much? Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah make yeah. him i mean he's he has dodge built in which they'll probably keep but like just m maybe make him more offensively based and then there'll be certain events where you just where you would rather bring the int one if you have both because yep. what even though they've done that a bunch of times it's kind of boring if it's just a case of okay well he's just now the better one out of the two so you're never going to run the int one anymore yeah yeah I, one last thing i do want to say about this gogeta specifically though i feel like they did a good job designing him um, he's based around uh, Rainbow Key Spheres, which he never had prior to Easy Gay, and I feel like the reason they did that is because the two teams that he wants to be used on, which are Movie Heroes and Fusions, the Fusions team has that Ink, Gotenks, and Ghost, right? So yes. That, right? That, that unit's very good, especially after they're Easy Gay. Oh, yeah, so no, it's very good. Yeah, and also they're Int, so you can actually run that combination yep. on, um, you know, the, the types of Battle stage. And then the other team movie heroes has you know like probably one of the, i still consider this guy one of the best lrs the uh spirit bombs of goku oh, you yeah, have him no. floating around if you want to have him a floater or you can have him main rotation with this gogeta because i believe they both have experienced fighters and stuff yeah good links that you, you oh. bring up a very good point Koresh, actually because i used them on movie heroes super battle road and aside from over in a flash and fused fighter they share every single link together and yep. that lr goku is giving him rainbow orbs so i mean fused fighter and um over in a flash yeah they're good links obviously but the like the extra attack that you get if you're if you happen to have them at level 10 is really not that much of a difference so it's just like okay i'll i'll give up those two links if i can have the lr goku on rotation with him both yep. of them are going to lower the enemy's attack and then one ceiling and then this guy is you know grazing his defense and doing extra um, tons of amount of damage that's super effective potentially crits yeah I, you know it's it's a good little combo to run right there and then you also have the uh, str go 10 as well uh, who's still really good on movie heroes and then i think you also have that um that world tournament in trunks dude that Doesn't trunks he... is so awesome i love running that trunks he, he needs Sorry. a rainbow orb changer as well isn't he uh yes he is yeah so you have so many orb changers for rainbow on that team that's why i think they gave him that passive that's why i think they actually mm -hmm. did a pretty good job designing him yep global so. players fear not all of your easy events are currently open until january 3rd so you always have that don't <laughs> don't worry about it. It, it, it it'll be okay all right let's uh let's move on to the next topic still staying on the jp side revival so there's been some talks recently about this revival skill this revival mechanic and uh, a lot of people have been speculating where it's going to come into play but from what we know so far correct me if i'm wrong folks it is said that it is essentially kind of like a passive condition is that it's not going to be something separate it's going to be just a new mechanic built into the passive for certain units is that kind of what we're looking at here um and mm -hmm. where do you guys see this starting to really play in on the potential gohan that's coming up maybe the six-year ui what do you guys think which is a go on coming? We don't I mean, <laughs> apparently. It, apparently, the way the, the way the thing works is it, it's built off of a new other mechanic that's being added called costume or something. What did you say it was, Gresh? It wasn't actually costume gotta, that I, I it translated to. I'll be here once again. Um, I'll look it up. <laughs> Well, one it, thing, one thing I... it's not like a costume is what you people think. It's actually not yeah. like, you know, Grand Cross I was going to say, it's... like, people got excited when that was first announced. And, like, there's <laughs> no just, way yeah, it's going to be that. No... Because you think about yeah. how, like, the Super Attack animations, like, thanks to people like Dokon Assets and stuff, we've seen that, like, even though they're crazy good now, those are put together from, like, hundreds of small pieces. So the way the game works, you can't just, like change the character's costume and then they'll have a different no, they, costume on in the super attack animation like that it just literally can't work like that no yeah. they would have to completely change all the sprites the character animations everything 
Yeah, uh, and in terms of like, in terms of like, yeah, in terms of like a costume, that's what technically the stickers are. If you want to think of it that yeah. way, that's kind of like a and a, a visual upgrade to your cards. But uh, what did you say was visual change? Visual change, yeah. The way I know Mark and and everybody that have been doing it has actually been able to actually put this into the game and actually kind of uh, not really fully implement it, but implement it to the point to where it looks like this is how it's going to be. It's actually right next to what lo looks like the transformation button, and it's up there. It looks like it's going to have its own icon, but I guess they're just using the uh, the refresh or the change icon or whatever it is. Uh, but it it's like a it's like a transformation type of pop up that they're using. I don't know if it's actually because of what the uh, what it's actually using in the revival mechanic slash costume mechanic, or if it's just that they're trying to use it to use it to have something that pops up, but. Looks like something like that, and the revival mechanic is. I think it's it doesn't have like any any limitations. You can have literally six cards in your team that have this revival mechanic. <laughs> yeah. Well, Gresh, correct me if I'm wrong. When I when I personally translated it, it literally was the exact same uh, Japanese in terms of saying when conditions are met, and then it, it simply substituted yeah. transformation for uh, Fukatsu revival. So I was just like, oh, yeah, okay. So it's yeah, literally just that then. It is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it could also be, the, okay, the way I interpreted it was it can be that, like it can be inserted into a passive, but it could also be a separate type of skill, like how active skills like are separate. And that I, was going to be my question, yeah. Yeah, like it could be its well, own type of, act, like not active skill, like it would be called a revival skill, but it would be like put on the scouter in a separate area than an active skill. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I can that then. When it, in the database of the game, they have underneath where the card costume section is, the revive the revive effect pack ID, which is the revival mechanic, is under that. And yeah. the way the way card costume is labeled in the assets, it's called card underscore costume, which is similar to card underscore metamorphic, card underscore transform. So it's going to be similar to that, I would imagine, because of how they labeled it similar similarly to those three. Yeah, and uh, metamorphic and for you guys that don't know color. is giant transformation. Yeah, that's what they call it. I'm thinking this is going to be a really, really powerful skill that they wouldn't want to possibly be abused in the long run. So if they were to build this into the passive, then that would be a possible way for easy A's to eventually earn that ability. Whereas if they make it its own unique thing, like you mentioned on the scouter, if there's a completely separate button or something just to check out the revival skill, that gives it more of an exclusive feel and you cannot just give it to any old unit that strolls around with an easy A. Like it has well, to be only for particular units, right? Because easy A's can't earn that type of a skill. Well, I don't right? think like, easy A's- They don't gain well, transformations or anything. Yeah, but about, yeah, that, was gonna be, that was gonna be my point. I don't think they would ever give this to an easy A unit anyway, because they've never right. given a transformation to an easy A unit. And I don't feel like this would be different than that. Yeah. No, I, don't, I don't think this will be given to a to an easy a at all. Uh, it, yeah. It's like I said, it's similar to a transformation. They've never done it before. They could because this could work. It's not really, I guess, a transform. I mean, it kind of is a transformation if it's reviving as a different character. But uh, I don't know. Maybe so you know some like Boo who can regenerate. You know, maybe he just regenerates and you get one revive out of it. Something like that. right. You, like so that, that yeah, that was going to be my next point. So that being said. Are there particular units or particular situations that you'd want to see in units either pre-existing or that we would get in the future? Like, for example, this Gohan that everyone's talking about. Is there a particular unit that you would want to see some sort of revival mechanic built in? For example, Gohan, you know, when he gets completely demolished by Bojack, Goku swoops in and punches and then Gohan goes berserk. So that could essentially be his revival skill. Are there other units that you guys would like to see? If you could, you know, picture it for yourselves right now, what would there, what, what unit would you want? this revival skill to be associated with. Right, I'll go ahead. And, um, well, it's it's all but confirmed that we get the Master UI Goku um, for the anniversary on JP. So I hope that he will get that mechanic. Um, I think it will pretty much suit him. Yeah, I mean, I if this, this, this feels like an anniversary level thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's would pretty it, likely. But would it be Master UI? Because it only technically worked when he went Omen. Never yeah, that's what I was thinking. For yeah, UI. but blue Gogeta also went Super Saiyan before blue, so that's just the transformation. He didn't revive himself. Yeah, but I'm just saying they can skip like transformations, right? 
I guess. Yeah, no, I think what he means is because we're all assuming that the base name for the card that comes out for the anniversary is going to be Mastered UI because we don't have him as a standalone card yet. So if he's already in Mastered UI, he's probably not going to have something Mm -hmm. like that. It could be Blue Goku. We don't have have Blue Goku from Terminal Power at all. (laughs) <laughs> I, know, I know Goresh is going to appreciate this, and I'm just going to throw this out there because I'm a Budokai fan. I want Frieza to Mecha Frieza. I want I want Final That'd Form cool. Frieza to full power. Like, he survives the Spirit Bomb, he comes back and just transforms to full power. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Cool idea. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I, ha- I had one, now I lost it because I was thinking yeah. of something else. Because, yeah, I think the blue Goku one is one that people would expect from, like, the, the anime, I guess, the anime. Because are we assuming that these are, because the revival is not the actual specific, like, wording, is it? So it's not, they're not all going to be, this happens when you die. No, it actually is called revival. Oh, it is? Yeah, it is. So are we just yeah. assuming that they are all going to be triggered when you die with, like, the specific... That's what it sounds like, but it's a little bit weird have, like... Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna make a team of six revival units. Like, okay, yeah, because it's funny because we we talked about this a few episodes before this was leaked about how we didn't think something like this would work in Dokkan because yeah, of how I mean, like your elf works and stuff. So I think they would have to limit it to only happening once per battle. Yeah. Mm. How about Namek Vegeta? The, in terms of the revival yeah, mechanic, work. there's there's nothing in terms of a limitation right now. They could add it, but there's no limitation right. What's interesting about Namek Vegeta is they specifically have had the art for him in the game for like two years and they've never used it. Hmm. The, one that where, the one where that was where Tim, like, literally jumping. what he yeah yeah that was literally what he was going for. He wanted to almost die, and then Dende would heal him, and then he would get a Zenkai. I feel right? like that could be a really good free to play unit to introduce the mechanic. Yeah, that'd be. I mean, yeah. yeah. So for for things like this, they have to have a more accessible option, right? Which is how they did the whole exchange thing although they never really panned out to more than that but yeah mm. that would be a great way to ingratiate that into the free-to-play side yep. one that Any other want, ideas? i was gonna say one i'd like to see because at some point you know we're probably gonna get some kind of new uh z broly because it's been a while um how about a super saiyan goku that uh when his revival skill triggers it's then like the um vegeta piccolo and trunks and that giving him his energy to then do the final attack against Broly in the first Broly movie. That'd be pretty cool. I would love to see that effect where he's like just in the, in the, the thing that makes me so excited is like, we're just obviously, even regardless of what they actually do in game in terms of mechanics, is like the animations. Yeah. Like the animations that they're going to have from what we've yeah. been seeing from some of the recent um, super attacks and stuff. Like, yeah, some of these potentially will be insane. The revives will have their own effects. Like it will be like an active looking kind of thing. It's not. I don't think mm. it'll be manually triggering, but it'll be like a passive trigger, and then it, like if you die, it just automatically revives you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, again, I don't think it'll be similar. I don't think they'll use like a transformation. I think it, the character has to die in some shape or form. You have to have no health, and then it'll trigger with that character on rotation or something. I mean, it, it'll probably be like if like that that'll... character takes the blow that kills you or something. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I would like to mention a card, you know, you just get Broly and then he drives into Bio Broly. Just saying. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, I want a Bio Broly. Please give me one. Give me one more. Yeah, I, I do want you a good Bio Broly. It's free to play. Enjoy. Ugh. Give him an easy A. <laughs> Please. No, he's Make not him wrong. better than in Gogeta. Area. He's not Make wrong. Make him better than in Gogeta. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? All right, yeah, so, so with that, I think, uh, are we done with the revival talk? Yeah, I think yeah. we are. Yeah. Pretty much all we really know. So. All right, so let's move on to the global side. There's not a whole lot to talk about, folks, so we're going to do our <laughs> best here. So we're going to basically do some speculation. So the Tanabata celebration is essentially upon us. We still have a couple more days. I think two more. Or is it two more or one more? We just got a couple more until this stupid prelude celebration is done and over with so are there any potential changes you guys would hope to see on this banner because basically what we're going to be getting if it follows suit like jp we're just going to be getting the same blue dudes banner except with 20 more featured units so is there anything else you guys are potentially looking forward to is there some change that you hope that they would implement um is it even worth going into the town about it is it all about saving up for the step ups what is the situation looking like for you guys, global players? Wow. 
<laughs> I mean, in terms of what would we like to see, um, content maybe. <laughs> What's that? Hey, <laughs> zing. But the um, so the thing is, um, I mean, obviously it's dry. It sucks. We've been complaining about it a lot, but hopefully they turn it around because obviously the thing people pointed out as soon as the news dropped is obviously this is it's called the prelude to Christmas campaign, and in the special missions and stuff, they all they all have prelude in brackets instead of part one so hopefully when the uh the next stuff comes out in the next couple of days it will feel more like an actual celebration in terms of actually having stuff to do so because I, I feel like the banner won't change um i don't think it did last year and um, the only thing we did get obviously was we had a pilaf trove ticket thing for the um tanabata last year um so yeah, but other than that, I don't think the banner will change. But hopefully, yeah, it'll just be more like a what we would expect from a celebration and actually get some uh, some content. Like like the new Super Bowl Road stages, maybe. It'll be about time. <laughs> That's probably the only thing that no, can we'll potentially satisfy the global player base right now, right? Because we still don't have the virtual Dokkan Clash, the newest reward, which is, it's now been... Bobbity and Deborah have now been a reward for you guys on JP for what, like six, seven consecutive clashes now or something like that? Six, like, seven months, yeah. Something crazy. So Global still hasn't even been given that Bobbity Deborah. So other than that, I guess the only thing that we would really be happy with would be those Super Battle Road stages. Do you actually see that that is a realistic possibility? I mean, it should be because they should have been out by now So compared to when they came out on JP. So unfortunately, it's one of those things we just keep hoping that it's going to come out with the next one because in terms of where it came out in the schedule for JP, it should be out already. So potentially any new campaign that starts, it could be there. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to give us four copies immediately. And then we have to wait for the fifth one for like a year. That'd be very fun. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Because, yeah, didn't we only just get the final um, yeah. Mecha Freezer and King Cold as well? Yeah, it took them like a million years to release that, so. <laughs> Gonna get it after New Year's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there is like one more thing we could quickly discuss, which is the fact that we have, uh, in the same grouping of data mines that we got for the revival skills, we got that sort of like little piece of information that there was co-op missions data mined, as well as I think it was called match missions, or like the versus missions. Um, and, and then that missions too. Yeah, so like we had a bunch of those data mine, and the last time we saw those utilized was during the worldwide celebration. Obviously, means or hints towards a combined celebration between global and JP. So it's possible we do see something come out of that. Um, I mean, there, there, there's talk about potentially Jump Festa, which is on the 20th this year. Uh, so in eight days, could announce a join celebration, and uh, that from there we sort of go into that for New Year's. But who knows? Which, by the way, we will so be they... streaming here, so stay tuned. Yeah, we will be streaming John Festa. Because so when, when does the again? current JP celebration stuff end, like date wise? Because obviously Thursday. we're still waiting for part two for Gohan. But this Thursday, we um, it'll like the BoJack banner goes away and all that stuff. So, hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually so by now we would have seen something. Global ends on the thirteenth, by the way. Just yeah. man, it's a bit dry is out today, here today. Japan time. <laughs> <laughs> it is super dry out today. I was just thinking yeah, of even when. Even like isn't a bit moist. <laughs> I was thinking of when a collab thing between the two versions could actually fit in. So, do you think it would be more towards New Year? Because like both versions pretty much are about to go into like another part of an already existing celebration. So yeah, it's possible that JP and Global both get their LRs at the same time. So JP gets Gohan, Global gets Jiren. And then a week later, we just go into another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they could do it like post Christmas, like a few days after going into New Year's start it. Yep. They did a joint celebration. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then they have the, the six year on JP following that. Yeah, maybe they called like New Year, New Dokkan or something, and they actually start caring about the game again. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope. Well, folks, we tried our best. So <laughs> there you have it. That's the global talk for this week. <laughs> and uh, that is also going to conclude the first half of the show. But fear not, we are not done. We will be answering your questions from Twitter coming up next after the short break. We'll be right back.
All right, guys, uh, real quickly, we want to give a quick shout out to our new subscribers real quick. Uh, so we're not really sure who this is, but the Mass Ningen, uh, thank you so much for the two month prime sub. Uh, oh, again. You legend. <laughs> you, you, you are a legend. Well. You're a legend there, man. <laughs> and then uh, a shout out to uh, XD. You're a god. Thank you so much for the one sub month tier one sub. So uh, thank you so much for all the support, guys. All right. So, folks, a couple of days before the show kicks off, we like to post something on Twitter. Make sure to follow us on Twitter so that you guys can post your questions that we could potentially answer on air on the show. And some of you did that, so we're going to be reading some of those questions right now, starting with Brad Staz. Brad Staz asks, if there is a level of concern among you boys for the game's health... Wait, did I read that right? Is there a level of concern among you boys for the game's health? No flow of difficult content to make all these new busted units worth summoning for. I find myself spending money for the new shiny card, then instantly being bored and going back to just link grinding. Well, at least you have the willpower to do that. I don't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that right now. I saw that stream the other day there, Tune. <laughs> I, hey, look, once in a while I'm overdue, right? Yeah. Um, I guess I'll start. So, I think this is not a game that's designed to be just played constantly. Mm, I think no, it's like no. something that you just you just play when you're bored, or yeah. like you're on the bus, or you're like walking down the street, or you're waiting in the waiting room for whatever you know. It's just something you do to pass the time. It's not something you actively grind or whatever. I mean, you can do that if you want to, and that's why link grinding is in the game. Um, but I feel first and foremost, it's a collection game. Not really... Okay, I'm summoning for the units for a specific purpose. You're summoning for the units for the purpose of just having them, I think, in this game. At this point. It, it used to be like that, but now it sort of is. Um, I do have some sort of concern, though, for the difficult content, because they really just copy and paste previous events and that's all they do so that's like the only area of concern that i have in terms of the game is gonna like die like i don't see that ever happening well not ever but i don't see that happening anytime soon at all because the game still makes a lot of money and stuff but in my opinion it has been a little bit dry obviously we all agree based on the uh, title of the podcast this week but um yeah i don't know i feel like because i feel like december also historically has been like one of the more hype months for this game and this one hasn't really been that great so i don't know this whole year hasn't really been that great for the game but maybe it's just me playing for five years is sort of i don't know made yeah, eventually you're, you're gonna get burnt out right but i don't know i, I feel like it is that i feel like it is just dry though like i don't think yeah. it's just me <laughs> well no I, I i definitely agree on that um i mean as somebody who has made content on this game now for i can't believe i'm saying this five years almost uh like even even now like when i take the train to work in the mornings like i'll turn the game on i'll do my my i'll get my daily stone through doing those missions or whatever and i usually use my three boosts to try and link level a couple of things and i'm done that's it i don't touch the game until maybe if i have to record something or something pops up but other than that i don't touch the game anymore um and i think you are absolutely right that it's not really meant to be played as this constant thing you know 24 7 on your phone all the time right i mean if you're going to do that you're probably going to jump around like a console or a pc or something like that um so it it's it sh- hopefully new year's has some stuff and like you said new year uh, or christmas generally in the past we've had stuff but i don't know just I don't know what's going through their heads. I know I don't know if it's the the virus, uh, you know, yeah. has in, all of a sudden increased or something like that. You know, um, I mean, we have been seeing numbers increase pretty, pretty much around the world, um, aside from maybe a few countries. But I don't know what well, we we don't know how much it truly affected them. Unfortunately, right? We we don't know yeah. uh, what that's on. We we see, we've seen it hit some you know other developers really hard. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So. It's one of those, I think, you, yeah, you have to take that into at least some consideration. Because yeah, if, if it was Absolutely. just a normal year like every other year and we were still right. in this situation, then I think it would definitely be more, we'd be worried a lot more. Um, but yeah, right. we just, I guess we don't really know like how much of it is due to that. And the problem is as well is the game often, uh, there are obviously peaks and troughs and like sometimes when they do things really well and there is loads of content and everyone's really happy because there's loads of stuff to do, it then just makes times like now seem even worse because it's such a stark contrast. I can tell you from my personal experience, every single day I would play Dokkan to always make sure that the stamina was working for me 
where I'm always doing something in Dokkan. The game is constantly recharging while I'm doing something else, playing another game. Nowadays, I've actually found myself quite frequently coming back and logging into the game with a completely full stamina bar. And for me, that's a lot because I don't like to have my stamina bar full because the game's not working for me when I'm not playing it. Yep. And that kind of speaks to the fact yep. that like I've done so much in the game. I do everything in the game and I do so much of it, but usually I have a goal in mind. And because I've done everything in the game so much, that goal that I have in mind to upgrade this free to play unit or this obscure unit or work on this super attack free to play, all of that is kind of starting to fade away. And I don't really have that same motivation, which is why I'm not really doing as much in the game and I'm not letting the game work for me in that same way that it used to. And I've only been playing for what, two years? I started around the 250 million download celebration. So I've been playing for a lot less than these guys and I've been playing a lot of Dokkan, but now I'm starting to feel a bit of the fatigue. So they really need to do something um, but yeah, it's not, it's not dead just yet. It's just in a lull period. That's what I've been saying. I mean, when I say dead, I mean, like, it's just dry. I don't mean the game is going to shut down. Like, yeah. This game is yeah. not going to shut down, right? At least some makes too much money for that. I just, I just don't feel as excited about things than mm. as I used to. And I feel like that's just a product of the events not being as exciting. Right. I mean, you release a new event this year. Guess what? It's Extreme Super Battle Room, which is a copy and paste of an existing event. It's not something new. It's not something exciting. It's just ex literally just something we've already done a million times before. For crying out loud, what I had the most to look forward to on the last campaign for Global was farming out Metarildo free to play, the STR Metarildo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so, and that's the problem with the current yeah. campaign is we. Um, they dropped the camp the well, it, can we even call it a campaign but yeah for global was it dropped and it is basically a banner and a free to play event to farm two well, it's one new stage to farm two units and then even if you don't play the game a huge amount i mean aside from the fact that that uh, the two new free to play um girls have like an awful drop rate even if you don't play it a ton you'll probably be done especially if you're not going to summon or you're only like somebody who just decided to chance maybe like one or two multis then you've got basically got nothing else to do so i think Goresh, the things that you the thing that you said before it all comes back to this whole thing about like the celebration meta it just doesn't yep. doesn't work anymore i don't think yeah because you're getting all this all these events well i can't even say all these events anymore it's you're getting the one event at the start of each celebration and then you just complete it in a day and then for the next two weeks, you're just basically not doing anything, right? Uh, yeah, I feel like they need to actually make a lot more unique content and not just copy paste like Super Battle Road. Yeah, well, that's honestly the biggest, Battle Road. That's the biggest like cop out, lazy thing I've ever seen. <laughs> the thing is, that's I what mean, I've been saying, no one listens. <laughs> I mean, I love Super Battle Road, obviously. So, like, Extreme Super Battle Road, whilst it is a lazy thing, at least there was more stuff to do. So, like, even though it is a lazy option. Like, we've still got all these other categories that don't have their own Super Battle Road stages. Like, at this point, even if they don't want to release 10 at a time, even though that's kind of the meta that they've set so far, is, like, almost every celebration they could release, like, three more Super Battle Road stages because we have so many categories now. And then start doing more of the extreme versions. Like, even though it's not original, like, brand new content, it's, like, more things for people to do because, obviously, the people who aren't, necessarily got like whale level accounts they can't they're not going to be all of the new stages on the first day um, well no i'm not i'm not i'm not saying i'm not saying super battle road or extreme super battle road is bad because it's not, it's no, not no, a bad no. event. all i'm saying is what's bizarre. bad about it is i don't want that to then basically make sure that there's no other content coming out like it should not yeah. be that should like a copy paste event <laughs> should not be your main attraction in a celebration. It should be that yeah. plus something else. No, I can agree with that, definitely. Also, I, think it's, I think it's fair to me. mention that this mainly applies to veteran players because the new player experience is still amazing for Dokkan because there's just a plethora of things to do constantly for newer players to catch up. Portal of Memories makes other events that you feel like you've missed, quote-unquote, more accessible. So for new players who are just jumping in, this doesn't really apply but it's from it's mainly for the players who've been around for at least a year or two or longer so i think that's also worth mentioning extreme super battle road if they had introduced different mechanics into it i feel like mm -hmm. it would have been a lot better 
rather yeah. than just hey let's increase the attack and defense and hp of all the characters all they, all, here, all they that's, literally that's did event. was they went into the files increased the numbers and they just they yep. called it a new event <laughs> I, 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 yeah I, I was like literally sitting with noir checking each every year like all the extreme versus the regular it's like they literally went in hit zero at the end and then hit enter <laughs> it's, like, it's like it <laughs> Because, yeah, even though it's not necessarily super original, because they do that in basically all the new Infinite Dragon Ball history stages, but, like, they could have made it so that the the thing that makes it, quote-unquote, extreme Super Battle Road is making it like a like a challenge mode. So it's the same as the previous version, let's say, like, Realm of Gods, but using Realm of Gods as an example, because he's probably one of the strongest units on that team, especially for something like Super Battle Road, make it so that, like, fight two your units can't dodge and then like fight three your units can't additional or crit or something because then it's like it's like an extra challenge mode and then you have to build your teams differently so it's not just the same because obviously within reason because on the older stages you could probably get away with bringing some weaker units and then on extreme super battle road it's probably a little bit harder because they take so much extra damage but in a certain sense, you could just use the exact same team you used on the original version of, like, say, Mono STR to do the extreme Super Battle Road version. Whereas if they added some sort of, like, challenge modifiers, you would have to change up your team and, like, approach it slightly differently. Does anyone ever remember when they took, when they, they did stunning and then they took it away because you couldn't use it in any event that you could play? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you couldn't stun anywhere. What was the point of having it at that point? Yeah, that was the return. Like Super Battle Road, when Super Battle Road first came out, that was like the return of people realizing how good units that could stun was because it's like the most important mechanic. And lowering attack and ceiling too. Yep. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All those mo, all those things that had made been made irrelevant with the uh, harder Dokkan Fest events were suddenly super. super I think one of the reasons why they did that was because people would just take General Blue and and they would. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i remember back when i started some of the harder dokon events um you could literally just bring a full team of stunners and as long as you got good rng it might take you like 10 15 minutes to do that one run of the dokon event but it wasn't you basically never got attacked yep i mean i feel right. like with this with this copy paste meta like the legendary goku event is going to get a copy paste hard mode now probably oh, extreme <laughs> oh, legendary goku yeah event. You, know, you, know, you, know, you, you know what you call it you call it really Dragon Ball history. <laughs> really legendary. Extreme. I always thought right, that they would make a Vegeta and Frieza version of that. Let's move on to the next question because we got quite a few to get through. That was just one question. So the next one is brought to us by, if you see this, say L on all my tweets. He asks, do you think the director change is the reason Dokkan has gotten so bad content-wise since the end of the 300 million download celebration? Director change happened end of 2019 beginning of 2020 yeah uh um, when did that happen it was, it was like it's like end of 2019 whenever i remember talking about with no war so and then uh until, so was the answer or was it i mean kind here's the here's it. the thing one piece treasure cruise got dokon's original director and look how good that game's doing <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's yes then <laughs> Yeah, I don't really. I'm not really informed enough to be able to. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna we, say we, I don't really yeah, know. Unfortunately, that, unfortunately, yeah. we don't. We don't have that in kind of insider news or anything like that. Um, I mean, I guess based on if you wanted to look at the current state that the game's been going through for the last, you know, year essentially now, and you know, it, maybe it is okay to say, yeah, actually, ever since the new director came in, all of a sudden, boom, this has been happening. Like, maybe I, I don't know. So I don't I think know, the go, go, that, go find One Piece and uh, get our get our man back. Then. <laughs> I think the problem also is that when we got the director change, then COVID hit. So that he yeah, had to deal that, with that kind of on top whammy. of on everything. So it's kind yeah. of yeah. Imagine being sucks. that guy. Actually, you've taken over <laughs> the job of trying to maintain this game that everybody loves, and then all of a sudden this massive catastrophe happens, and then yeah. everyone's looking at you for the <laughs> responsibility. Yeah, I like, mean, okay, I copy will paste say- this. I will say that you can't really just blame one person because yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I see this mm-hmm. all the time in Legends. People blame yeah. one guy. You guys may know who I'm talking about. And I can tell you with 100% <laughs> confidence, it's not his fault that everything like no, that happened. No, it's not. Who's, not who's, the, no. who's the Dokkan guy on the Dokkan now? We just blame him now? <laughs> <laughs> no, he is a saint. <laughs> all right, let's move well, on no, to the next it's question. A, it's a team effort for sure. He must be protected. 
The next question is brought to us by Ant. Ant asks, how would you guys handle Dokkan Fest exclusive LRs and their returns? I think it's horrible that if someone didn't summon STR Vegito, they got to wait 11 months for him just to come back. Do you guys think we will ever see like Dokkan Fest exclusive LR on random Dokkan Fest banners? Why did I read the like? <laughs> well, so in terms of the, <laughs> in terms of the last part, we have because the GoBros have popped up on a couple of random banners, but they're in that weird situation where they were just released as like a solo one, so they don't have that secondary partner was, one that will feature on like the an same, opposite banner. But wasn't it the same time last, like last year that GoBro like GoBros released on like the banner before Christmas, Tanabato? So now the Blue yep. Boys will end up probably having that same treatment. I think yeah. it's I think it's actually it's my, yeah I, first of all I don't like the fact that they make us wait so long for them to come yeah. back I think it's a bad idea but I will say that clustering them all on like the anniversary and download banners are really good for people that are just saving their their stones because it just means you're mm. going to pull good stuff right that yeah. and newer players plus coming the, to the um, game yep yeah plus plus the STR go uh Vegito and I guess the Buhan on top of that as well even though that was in August, they should be back on the six-year anniversary, right? Yeah, I think this guy, you can tell from, because he says waiting 11, 11 months. 11 months, that's like global. global. Yeah, because yeah. obviously that's the only problem, as cool as it is, and it's hype when it happens. That's the only problem with the, um, well, I guess it's now the worldwide celebration, being at the same time, is because, yeah, those units then come back on the anniversary banner, which for JP is only like, what, four or five months later, which is a much more reasonable window to have to wait for them to come back but then they don't come back uh until the global anniversary which is months after that so i think this is definitely from the global perspective because it is exactly what happened last year so and gohan um didn't come back until the anniversary which for global is in july and then we have the celebration like a couple of months after that so it's almost a whole year um, what about uh what about zamasu and trunks yep so so for global, it's like for JP, I don't think it's as bad. Like the four to five months between the units coming back, obviously it'd be nicer if it was sooner, but I don't think it's as bad. But for global, if they are going to be dropping these units uh, on the dual celebration and then be waiting for the anniversary for the main feature banner, maybe it would be a good idea to have them come back on something like... I mean, I know we've talked... Truce talked about it a lot before and we've mentioned it before. Even if the games aren't synced, they uh it'd be good if they did some sort of celebration on the opposite version for when the other version is having its anniversary because then that would be the perfect time to bring those units back on a banner on global so that you don't have to wait like six extra months compared to jp in terms of that they could have like just a random celebration for the opposite version when the other version has its has its anniversary and then yeah. use the joint campaign stuff at the same time that way you can kind of get both versions Go yeah, it doesn't have it. to be like, so say the global version, like in February when JP has their anniversary, the global version doesn't have to be like anniversary level, but just have like a celebration to celebrate JP's anniversary. And then, yeah, that's when you can then bring those units back to fill in that gap in the right, release window. You get one easy, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> one whole one. No, you get half of it. You can't even no, get it. No, just be an extreme Z area. <laughs> You can only get to you can only uh, get uh, halfway through the Z Awakening. You can't do uh, the rest of it until part two. <laughs> All right, our next question is brought to us by Samuel L. Jackson because I can't read yeah. his name, so I'm just going to go oh. by the picture. Oh, okay, Samuel yeah. L. Jackson. Oh, actually, you know what? Why don't you? I got can excited. You read it? Then. Well, well, when it goes on the screen, you can you can read. Uh, it. Uh, Mi Michi. That's literally what his ad is. His name is his ad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. I, how am I supposed to know? Okay, Hydros, you did not know that. Don't even. I kind of figured most people <laughs> no, do that. Didn't. They put the Japanese I mean, name could, as like their full as their actual name. <laughs> no, you did. Yeah, you did not know it's, that. It's I've done that. It's Katakana for his actual name. Or yeah, I, no, I get you saying that, but Hydros coming at me like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? All right, we'll, we'll start with Sunblade on this one. Would you want to see more variety with the field of orbs, like the Boo enemies making food orbs? What else could be done and should anything else be done? So um, absolutely, yes, because uh, the game currently is so easy that I don't even have to look at the screen at certain events, maybe extreme to a better road, but even at regular to a better road. road. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in? I said we got a badass over here. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, what what should I say? The game is, is, is too easy, and I just tap the screen uh, on regular Super Battle Road, and, and, and I don't even care, because I get the super attack all the time, and maybe maybe Akatsuki can change things up, make the game challenging, and not like copy-paste stuff like with Extreme Super Battle Road, like Hydro's... Uh, stated the perfect example they just added a number at the end so um yeah akatsuki has to think about stuff but to add a bit more to the first question um this will be very quick we have a lot of surveys and we get that revival uh, mechanic so akatsuki has to do something because we we never die in dokan and in order to trigger those revival skills we have to die so something is probably going to change i have hope i think instead of changing the way the orbs interact with uh, each other or how the field interacts with itself. I think they just need to make units that interact differently with the field of orbs. Like you could just make it that way. Cause that, that's easier to bake into the kits of these units too. Right. Mm. So I don't know, maybe you just expand on the concept of like, Oh, you know, when you collect three or more key spheres, you get, I don't know, your whole rotation gets defense. Or when you collect, um, I don't know, maybe if you collect, three or more str key spheres you do this and like pretty much how the the brio the, the yeah the brio the broly the trio brio. is is uh designed <laughs> but yeah. make it do different things too like maybe if you collect 10 or more key spheres like your whole rotation has dodge guaranteed or something mm. oh that'd be cool yeah do something like that so you're gonna have to really think about what you're doing in terms of okay like literally like two turns ahead of what you know that unit is coming on rotation in two turns from now you want to set them up to be in the best situation so that you can actually utilize their ability to the best that you can. Yeah, yeah, because we all, um, regardless of what you think of the unit itself, we were all quite excited about the Brody trio just because of the way they were designed. And then they haven't really done that again since they released them. Which is a huge we're... shame because they're an amazing unit. I love that card still. I have a cool yeah. idea. Oh. Why don't they yeah. add like singular orbs occasionally one orb could be something i'm not a game designer so i don't know if this is easy to do but what if they add like a couple orbs with different properties if you pick up this one orb you gain x amount of health back but the trade-off is no super attack for that unit if you pick up this orb you get a massive boost in your dokkan gauge but no super attack or anything if you pick up this orb you gain some defense or something like that like give like three or four different very unique orbs that mm -hmm. can show up randomly in the in the space of the field of orbs and then you could potentially use that for something else so you can actually start to think yep. all right is it worth using a super attack or maybe potentially getting a heal here that's a good like idea that, that yeah, was kind of going to build off my idea instead it would be hidden orbs that are masked as actual orbs like it can mask as a certain Ooh. typing a rainbow orb or whatever but it's like a minesweeper effect if you hit one you either get like a negative or a positive effect happen to your character well, that'd be kind and of cool. enemies, oh, cool. And then enemies so could like, also it, have their passives influence those orbs as well. I like that. That's, that's like that a super could be reverse mushroom hidden inside. Dokkan yeah. will never do it, but it'd be cool. Oh, man, you'd imagine <laughs> that. I feel like that, that's actually a really good idea. So I guess as long as it's not in every single mode. Like, imagine being that guy who's about to complete the hardest stage <laughs> for you of Extreme Super Battle Road for the first time, and then you hit an orb that ends up getting killed. What about like uh it's like, what about it like, like reduces a, a HP by half? What about like a boo what about like a boo unit who changes orbs to candy and they get like some ridiculous boost for getting those candy orbs? That'd be cool. Yeah, that's quite I feel cool. like there needs to be have... something with the candy. Yeah, because we have units in the game who have like is I think it's only heal when they pick yeah, up candy yeah. orbs, but we don't have any units that A do anything other than that, and B, we don't have any units that actually create them. So it's only in those specific events, which is what like three maybe in the whole game um so yeah that'd be kind of cool like actually have a boo unit that creates them and then does something different based on picking them up that'd be cool yeah i mean they can definitely right. create more typings of orbs and stuff so either that or like like i said the minesweeper effect because it i mean it literally looks like a minesweeper board a, a little bit if you look at it honestly and, uh, they how could it kind of like, branches out they could just turn on like a like a mode mystery board mode or something and then you do like a super battle road race you don't even know what you're picking up That'd be pretty cool it's like the board goes invisible <laughs> well no i mean like they're all one uniform color and then you pick one and then if it randomly ends up being like a stream of red orbs you're good but if it ends up being one you're 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 in trouble i don't know definitely be interesting like the entire field of rainbow orbs <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> all right the next question is brought to us by ultra instinct rose goku black and he asks 
do you think we'll ever get another Super Saiyan 3 Broly anytime soon? And if we do, do you think he will still have the lowering defense when orbs are collected mechanic? Um, Probably not, because they know how much people hate that. And you don't understand how much backlash they got from the JP community once they revealed ZZA. Like, people yeah. were oh, so pissed. That. Oh, they were pissed. Yeah. I don't think they would do that again. But in terms of if we're ever going to get one anytime soon, probably not anytime soon. But in the future, for sure, because it's Broly, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like Final Form Cooler, right? We haven't gotten another one since the physical one, yeah. We definitely will, though. Final Form Cooler LR is definitely coming at some point. Yeah, I, I would agree. Time. I would imagine probably not soon, but I mean, considering how many versions of many of the other characters we have, plus, like Goresh said, the uh, the general overall popularity of Broly, um, especially considering a lot of people don't rate the EZA of the tech one, um, they definitely have space to actually bring out one that people would be super hyped for because as as popular as broly can be if they release a new one and his card is actually really good because remember the tech one even before his eza was not good so if they bring out a new one and make his card actually really good i imagine people would summon for that to play devil's advocate though when you've got a certain unit that does something you can't just bring a second unit of the same name and then have that unit do something vastly different right it's got to be somewhat similar so it's not like they can completely so break away from this lowering defense identity that Broly has kind of been given, right? Kind of, because yeah. they, they've done that before, but like they kind of did, like, Vegito has counters, but then they brought out a Vegito that doesn't have counters. Um, so they, they have kind of strayed away from that type set before. Um, but hopefully they do, because imagine, imagine being the character that gets lumped with that. It's like every single new version they bring, he has a defense lowering mechanic, so automatically nobody likes him. <laughs> SS3 transforming to bio Broly. Anyone come on, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> back in the dungeon. Back in the dungeon. This now, how about bio be... Broly who turn one transforms into Super Saiyan 3 Broly so we never actually have to see bio Broly? There you go. All I'll right. And we are moving on to the last question brought to us by Ultra. Ultra asks What are some ideas you have that can work within Dokkan's framework system? Anything you're expecting year six to bring? Kind of a general question. Revival. I mean, that whole orb, <laughs> the whole orb conversation we just had. I yeah, I'm actually, was, uh, I actually really like the orb there. thing. So yeah, yeah make that happen. Well, Dokkan's orb system definitely has the capability to do what we talked about with the orb. So it can do yeah. it. I actually, a, lot a of us long done time ago, this is like when like Tech Beerus released, I had created like a concept for Beerus, which would be like he creates like one Hakai orb on the, on the board and like only he could get it. But if you get if you manage to like get it with here, like you have to maneuver the orb fields so that you get mm. that high orb down to the bottom so that Beerus could get it. But then once he got it, he would like have like a five hundred percent attack boost or something. Dude, that'd be awesome. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess it just that. stems off of what we were just saying, but the orb thing is a huge possibility for stuff that they could do. The fact is Dokkan's system is so limited because of how old it actually is. Mm. But well, stuff like the orb stuff is definitely possible. They could do that, but anything else, I mean, it's a it's a surprise they're introducing revival. But again, it's it's kind of similarly based to the transformation mechanic because it's like it's literally yeah. a transformation at the end of the day. Yeah, uh, it's if something you're, like that fits. dying and then coming back. So yeah, it kind of fits into the same because at the end of the day, assuming it is what we think it's going to be, it basically is just a transformation. But the restriction, rather than hitting like a HP or a turn thing, is the unit getting killed. Um, so the problem is, it's hard to think within the framework of what Dokon does because it is kind of restrictive. And the problem is where the line kind of gets split is when they have branched out and tried to do something completely different, like Battlefield 1.0, nobody liked it. Uh, then Battlefield 2.0 is not a new game mode. It's just the same thing, but staged slightly differently. And then they try to do something new again with Chain Battle and nobody likes that either. So... It's uh, here's the thing with Chain Battle. Difficult. Make that make that world tournament and I'll be happy. Or make the world tournament like Easy A, and that, that's it. <laughs> Take out that stage crap. That's annoying. Oh, but yes. um, Dokkan system like <laughs> they can't they can't even implement HD cards because the, the game engine only works in one resolution. And we've actually tried. We've tried changing it, and it looks awful. You know what's <laughs> funny that 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 reminds me of when we were talking about the whole costume thing. 
Tech Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, when he does that close up, when he's diving in for that slam, it just made me think, what if you gave him an HD like tuxedo costume? And so he's got like the HD resolution outfit, but his face is two like two twenty p. Imagine them doing <laughs> costumes, right? They have to redo all the animations. They have a separate animation. They have to redo yeah. all the sprites. Yeah. So the game literally just doubled in size because you have to redo all the animations for all characters, and all, especially these characters that have like huge animation sheets. So yeah. it's just like L R what L R S T R Gogeta Blue, uh, his transformation literally is like screenshots from the movie. So imagine having to edit that. <laughs> I know Talon yeah. would like this idea. Give us an update where we can remove the diamond holographic background. Yes! Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, yes, I would like that. The diamond background looks awful. At least give us an option to turn it off. I don't get it's why they make cards ideas, with backgrounds. Oh, all right. Someone free. in the chat said extreme Dokkan events. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's something I think we talked about that ages ago about the idea of like an extra difficulty where you just got more. Honestly, man, you want to hear the I'll, same thing. I'll like. give you a cost effective version. You want to do an extreme Dokkan event? I got you. Here's what you do. You take your team in and then you bring a leader that has nothing to do with your actual team. <laughs> Ergo, what I did for like the first three months of playing Dokkan. I literally right, just bring our events with only one leader skill. Try that out. Pet. Bring our Yamcha. Yeah. Boom. There you he'll, go. He'll be effective. He'll die on the spot when he gets hit. There you go. Extreme Dokkan <laughs> event. It's twice as difficult and nothing's changed. You're welcome. <laughs> Bondi, you yeah. hearing all this? Hire me. I'll give you a free Broly Then blame too. Tune when you break your phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then call Nolar. He'll buy you a new one. All right. So before we wrap things up, we have a quick word from... The homie Sunblade. Sunblade, bitte. Oh, yes. All right. So uh, if you paid attention last week, I announced that we published a survey for our Dokkan Battle podcast. So we really want to improve our content. We want your feedback. Is everything great? Uh, let us know. Um, do you want to see some changes in the, in the podcast? Uh, yeah, make your voice heard now. I will retweet the survey once the podcast is finished. So, yeah, make sure to uh, make your voice heard and then um, we will see mm -hmm. about the improvements. Thank you very much. Put the link in. Let me put the link in the chat, too, for people that may want to get it through here. Yeah, do it. Let, me do, let me do that right now. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Hydros was faster. So, Thank yeah, you. check out <laughs> Hydros Plays uh, URL right there in the Twitch chat. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much. And with that, we will wrap up this week's show. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. Huge thank you to Hydros. Hydros, I'm calling you out. Thank you for manning the boards, keeping the stream afloat. Thank you, thank you. Don't forget to follow Make us over ass. on Twitch and Twitter <laughs> and join the Discord and check out our new Facebook fan page, brand new Reddit, the website, everything. Find all of the links everywhere. Make sure you are fully locked into the 59G network. And if you miss any part of the show, fear not. All of your favorite podcasting platforms have you covered. Google. Apple, Spotify, many more. Subscribe and don't skip a beat. Join us right here tomorrow for our next episode of the Dragon Ball Legends podcast. And later on today, possibly even after the stream, we might be doing something on Twitch, so stay tuned, folks. For Talon, Mass Ningen, Hydro, Sunblade, and Goresh, I am Toon Rami. Thank you once again for watching. Stay tuned and always remember to Dokkan responsibly. <laughs>